and welcome to Joburg Today. My name is Dumi Chapel, bringing you the best of what's going down in and around Johannesburg. In order to inquire the safety and quality of water, scientists at Rand Water Analytical Services world-class laboratories constantly test our water. Rand Water turns natural surface water into safe potable water en masse. To do this, it has a water quality monitoring program based on strict standards. In South Africa, we use a standard called the South African National Standard 241, which is what we call the SAN Standard 241, and that measures water quality against about 57 determinants. All those determinants are tested in a laboratory. Randwater Analytical Services is the laboratory site for Randwater. It basically houses the laboratory that does the water quality testing. Now, very importantly, the SAN standard is actually benchmarked against the World Health Organization standard, and this is why we can say that we comply with international standards when it comes to water quality. Based in Vereniging, Rand Water Analytical Services tests samples from as far away as Harry Smith in the Free State and Rustenburg in Northwest. Water is tested on a regular basis, on a daily basis, especially in the case of indicator pathogens, seven days a week. We provide approximately a million data sets per year in terms of water quality. So that is very rigorous testing in terms of supporting water quality. Analytical services employs state-of-the-art technology in their work. We use the best technologies available both in the chemistry laboratory as well as in the biology laboratory. All of the technologies we use are amongst the latest and provides the lowest detection that we can possibly achieve in the laboratory. Biological contamination refers to the levels of bacteria and chemical contamination to levels of harmful chemicals impacting on human health. Work being done at Randwater Analytical Services compares favorably to that being done by reputed uh, institutions across the world. Not only do we benchmark our standards nationally, we also benchmark our standards globally, so the water is tested not just to the SANSO241 standard, which is a national standard, but we also benchmark to EPA standards, US standards, Australian standards, as well as the World Health Organization standards. I think the, the track record of Rand Water uh, in excess of 110 years speaks for itself. We've had no major water quality incidents. Uh, one of the major contributors of uh, water concern, especially on the continent, is that of cholera. Uh, we've had no such incidents, simply because the, the program is very rigorous and ensures that the water is of both safe and healthy quality when it is delivered to the consumer. Now if one thing is clear, at Rand Water Analytical Services, water is well, not just water. Marisa de Klerk, Joburg Today. Hey, what up? This is Boots, and you're watching Joburg Today. Like us on Facebook, joburgtoday.tv, and follow us on Twitter at Joburg Today. And if you're one of those that are constantly on the move, do catch us on pockettv.mobi, and that's pocket with an I. Johannesburg is the largest city in the world that is not located next to a major water source. As a result, our water must travel a long way and must be very careful how we use it. One major way that our water is wasted is by alien invasive plant species. Alien invasive species are a very big problem in the city of Johannesburg and because we are the largest man-made forest, they consume a lot of our water. We're here at the Vitson Secretary to find out more. Invasive means that they are able to move around the country on their own and that means that they've escaped from cultivation and they move into natural habitats and they transform those habitats. Basically humans that have moved plants around the world for the last 300 years when commerce exploded that's when our alien problem exploded. Nationwide, we're interested in their consumption of water. And the figures vary, but we've calculated that they use between 7 to 4% of the mean annual runoff. And that's why it's valuable for us to control them. The government has got a spectacular program in operation. It's called Working for Water. And it's something that we as all South Africans should be really, really proud of. They spend over 2 billion rand a year taking out alien weeds. What we're doing here is we're trying to introduce biological control agents which won't eradicate the plants but they will suppress the population to a manageable level. 
and we will introduce them wherever we can to try and suppress aliens in the city. Now jacaranda is a very nice example because that's actually a category three um, species which means that you can grow it but you shouldn't propagate it and you shouldn't grow it within 30 meters of a drainage line. But on the other hand there's a plant like lantana that many people have in their gardens because it flowers beautifully, it attracts insects which, and then it attracts birds with its fruit. But it is without doubt the worst terrestrial weed of the subtropics. And the way you can get involved is go onto those sites and look and see what is in my garden and what am I harboring as a pest and what can I do about it. And there's a website called invasives.org.sa and they will list everything. It goes from fish to birds to plants. So this plant here is uh, a solanum. It's called bugweed. This one unfortunately has found its way here probably because the flowers, and these are still buds at the moment, but it has very pretty little purple flowers. Um, and it's quite an interesting plant. It has these furry leaves as well. This is an incredibly common weed along the roadsides of um, Johannesburg. If it's in your garden, again, you've got to tear it out. It's a category one weed. Um, and it has two biocontrol agents on it. The lace bugs that we looked at in the laboratory uh, is are one of the agents. And the other is uh, there's a tiny little weevil that attacks the flowers. And again, if, if you can't rip it out, look for the agents and spread them around. And in fact, that would be a key issue. If we could get the general public to spread agents, that would help our job enormously. I'm Spio Matabula for Joyville Today. Hi guys, my name is Boiti and you're watching Joburg Today. Glass blowing is one of the world's oldest art forms but has only recently started to gain traction in South Africa. The Crucible Art Centre gives Joburg's artists the space to create and display their works while focusing on glass art. Crucible Art Centre is basically a place where people can come look at, appreciate or do art of any form. Uh, we concentrate predominantly on glass though, uh, any form of working with hot glass. I don't think there's a very strong culture for glass in South Africa, specifically glass blowing. Uh, that's one of the reasons, believe it or not, why we concentrate on the glass blowing at the Crucible, because we do offer an opportunity for people to come and experience glass blowing. There's one tertiary institution that does give glass blowing as part of their fine arts degree. You can major in glass blowing. When the students leave there, there is actually nowhere for them to come and, or go and blow. There are a limited number of hot shops in the country as well. I think at last count there are about five hot shops. And I do believe we might be the only one that allows public access. And glass students can come and work here, they can use the equipment. There are two of us most of the time. So Ryan and myself do most of the blowing here, but neither of us work here, it's an art centre. We produce art here. There are lessons offered here. We began by offering a beginner's course and an intermediary course, an advanced course. But everybody's propensity for glass blowing differs. Historically, it's one of the earliest art forms um, that appeared. Uh, the culture in South Africa, unfortunately, isn't very strong for glass blowing. Nothing like Europe and so on. So the more we can spread that culture and people realize the rich history in the creating of glass and using molten glass, the better it will be. Hi, my name is Gemma and you're watching Jobo Today. For more on what's going down in the city, do check out our playlist. From myself, Dumin Shapo, I leave you with a Build It Up by Monarch. Back in ETV. Love is the strangest feeling. Oh, you won't get enough. But it won't last forever till you got a pretty rough Fear is a crazy feeling, oh it will drag you down But it won't last forever till it's got a pretty tough I can't wish to fly but I'm gonna spread my wings And we ain't giving up till we've seen it all Yeah, we can build it all 
But it feels like breaking down So keep a little bit Oh, keep a little bit of your heart Can't build it all When you're losing all control So keep a little bit Oh, keep a little bit of your soul Now let your heart believe in and what you're living for Knowing and if you never find something you adore Oh love's a crazy feeling Yeah you won't get no But it won't last forever Till you got a pretty toe I can't wish to fly But I'm gonna spread my wings And we ain't giving up Till we've seen it all Yeah we can't be Feels like breaking down So keep a little bit Oh, keep a little bit Of your heart oh, Can't build it all When you're losing all control So keep a little bit Oh, keep a little bit Of your soul Break the silence of anonymity You wanna go and start a war since you were 17 I wanna shake the chains of your animosity You're willing but you're holding on to all your vanity I wanna break the silence I wanna set us free So we can work and move on we can build it all when it feels like breaking down. So keep a little bit, oh, keep a little bit of your heart. Up. We can build it all when you lose and not control. So keep a little bit, oh, keep a little bit of your soul. Keep a little bit of your heart